Good afternoon and welcome to Unbox Lunch. Before we get started, please know that this event is being recorded. I'm Jenny Williams, Associate Director of the Archives of American Art here at the Smithsonian Institution. We're thrilled that you are joining us for lunch, which I'm enjoying here in my office um, in, the, in our headquarters in downtown Washington, DC. Jacob Proctor, the Gilbert and Ann Kenny New York Collector at the Archives of American Art, will soon join us from our New York offices. Today's event will feature the newly acquired papers of art critic and author Robert Hughes. Born in Australia in 1938, Hughes wrote for various Australian and Br British publications before moving to New York in 1970 to become the art critic for the New York Times Magazine, a position he held for three decades. A few housekeeping items. At any point during the webinar, you can submit your questions into the Q&A box um, at the bottom of the control panel on your screen. Closed captioning is available. You can access captions by clicking the CC button on the right side of your control panel. Now I'd like to welcome my colleague, uh, Jacob Proctor. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Jenny. Hi, hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm here in our New York office um, and it's, uh, I'm excited to be able to share uh, the Robert Hughes papers uh, with you. This is a recently acquired uh, collection um, donated by, uh, by Hughes's widow, Doris Downs, um, at the end of last year. Um, and I have had a chance to go through it all first with her and then again, um, sort of uh, reboxing, essentially putting everything into archival uh, archival housing and getting a mixture, getting everything organized. Uh, this is a really great collection. Um, as, uh, as Jenny said, Hughes was um, was a very prominent critic. He moved to moved to New York in 1970 to become the chief art critic for Time Magazine, um, actually. And uh, he was a very decorated critic, multiple time winner of College Art Association's uh, Frank Jewett Mather Award for uh, distinguished criticism. Um, and of course, it's familiar to a lot of people uh, because of um, his role in making this whole series of uh, very popular um, television documentaries. Um, and I'll go into some of the files in one of, for one of those uh, in this event. Um, so this collection is, it's about 28 linear feet, includes a lot of different kinds of material. Um, one thing that I, it's particularly strong in is correspondence. Um, there are multiple boxes of correspondence, and then there's a lot of correspondence sprinkled uh, throughout various project files. So I thought I would start out with some of that. Um, he was, uh, here's was a friend, was friends with a number of, uh, with a lot of artists. And so there's a lot of, uh, there's quite a number of letters from various artists. So I'm gonna just switch my video. Um, so here we have, there's a whole folder um, of correspondence um, from Mother, Robert Motherwell, uh, who, with whom he was quite close and who seems like, um, from what I gather, was almost like a kind of mentor in some ways. Although I think he was, I don't know if he really needed a mentor. He seems like he was a bit of a force of nature uh, from the very beginning. Um, but correspondence is really one of these things that, um, that is especially useful for researchers. Um, and so there's, there's quite a lot um, of that in this collection, which is really nice. Um, there's also, this is, a, here's another great folder of correspondence um, with, uh, with Frank Auerbach. Um, and this is a little bit of a different situation. Um, where Hughes wrote a book <laughs> about Auerbach um, and also uh, had his portrait painted. And so one thing that's really interesting here, so we have, you know, in this, uh, in this folder of correspondence with Auerbach, it just like these letters from Auerbach uh, where he's talking about his responses to Hughes's text, just like, and clarifying things and sharing additional details. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. So it's, uh, it's a very, very interesting um, uh, series of correspondence. Um, there's also, these are great. There's, there's, the, there are these photographs, um, these Polaroids of, of Hughes's portrait by Auerbach. Um, and so they're all, they're all um, you can see this end of fifth sitting. Um, and then we have final state. So it's 
kind of cool that you can see this portrait um, coming into, into being over the course um, of all of these various sittings. There's also, uh, so that's, that's a really, uh, I think that's a particularly fantastic one. Um, novel. So there's also correspondence, there's personal correspondence um, with, uh, between Hughes and his uh, friends and colleagues and romantic partners. Um, this is a folder of correspondence with the, uh, with the critic Barbara Rose, um, with whom, uh, who was uh, Hughes's uh, girlfriend when he first moved to New York, although he was also married. Um, uh, and this is, this comes up here, she says at the very end of this letter, she says, PPS, get a divorce, don't leave without legal papers. Um, and there's quite a bit of a, um, a bit of that in their sort of tension in their relationship from what I gather in, the, in these letters is that um, Rose being unhappy with Hughes's unwillingness um, to get a divorce. What uh, a great it, antidote. Jacob, we have a question um, from, and I love this word, a volunteer. Um, they ask if these, if we plan on submitting the collection to the transcription center. Committing this collection to a transcription center. I'm not sure. Um, that's a, that's an interesting idea. Uh, in terms of all the handwritten, um, yeah, there is a lot of correspondence. So it, that may very well happen. Um, the transcription, uh, the volunteers who uh, do transcription um, of our uh, correspondence and notebooks and things like that are really amazing uh, contributors. Uh, so I think that's a really interesting idea. There are also, you know, there's also there are notebooks. There's a lot of manu like manuscript uh, information um, or manuscript material in this collection. So that is, um, that's a very interesting um, idea. This notebook I thought was particularly kind of nice because on the very first page is a note that um, for a dinner date, I think, um, with uh, Lawrence Fleischman, who of course um, was a very, very important um, uh, member of the Archives of American Arts uh, board. <laughs> um, but this and is actually a Actually, Barbara, his widow, um, Larry's widow, Barbara, is, has joined us. Oh, hi, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Um, this is a great notebook. It's this is a, a notebook that's um, from I think the mid '80s. This is a, a notebook where of a lot of questions and notes, uh, primarily having to do with the art market. And I think in uh, maybe when did he publish? He published a big story in Time about the art market. I think in maybe '89 or '90. Um, so this has a, a bunch of the notes um, uh, for for that piece, which is great. Um, what else? And there's there are journal excerpts. Um, like these are these are just uh, journal fragments. Uh, I think I have to re. Uh, there's a you know a whole folder of of journal fragments. Um, this one is from uh, uh, when in the run up to uh, the the premiere of the broadcast 2020, um, of which Hughes was one of the original hosts. Uh, and um, <laughs> the, the broadcast did not go well, we'll just say that. Um, and they completely changed the uh, sort of the team um, almost immediately. This was when ABC first launched it as an attempt to compete with 60 Minutes. Um, but there's a lot of really interesting, um, interesting notes here. Um, here's one from, I think this must have been, I don't know when this one, this one, there's some, a lot of them are undated, but you can often kind of figure it out. I think this one was from the late 1960s, um, which is a period when he was uh, living sort of between London and, um, and Italy. Uh, this one is all these notes about doing acid, uh, which is also very, a very late 60s um, thing to be doing. So there's, there's that. And one thing, another thing that I thought was kind of interesting in, in going through this collection um, was that, you know, Hughes, uh, there's a lot of, there are some interesting letters from people and notes from people that, uh, you know, that who's, who, where we also have, um, you know, for whom we also have uh, papers uh, 
in the collect in our collections. Um, so that was um, uh, that was also nice to see. And here's this one. I'm going to show. You. This is a sort of just one that caught my eye as being kind of funny. Um, so this is a letter from Francoise Cachin, who was um, uh, a French curator and museum director. Um, I think she was the director of the Musée, Musée d'Orsay, if I remember correctly. Um, and this is from the mid nineteen mid late nineteen nineties, and you know she's going along da 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 da, and then on the back, as uh, great <laughs> she says, I have an email now. <laughs> so I, I remember the, those years of people when we all got our very first email accounts. Um, here's another. Here's a letter from a uh, kind of letter, not so friendly letter from Clement Greenberg, who he is famously detested, um, and uh, they I, the feeling seems to have been mutual. Um, and then this is a really, I loved this when I saw this. Uh, this is a letter, a handwritten note from Bill Rubin uh, from the Museum of Modern Art, um, where he says, you'll have to believe me, this is the first time I've ever written anything but a nasty note to a critic. Um, and then he goes on to say the language, the spirit, everything about your article was worthy of the artist. Uh, you showed that you could at once be critical and still, still show that at its best, such art could carry you away. Um, so, you know, this is actually, and this is something that comes comes up again in another letter from Ruben uh, later on, which is where he's talking about, um, uh, he's saying, just a note to tell you that your, your Warhol article is a masterpiece. And this is interesting because Hughes was not much of a fan of Warhol, although he did respect him. Um, he, I think that Warhol was, a, you know, emblematic in some ways of, uh, for Hughes, of the sort of decline of art. Uh, in this period. Uh, and then a final one from a colleague that I thought was just especially funny um, is this one from Camille Paglia, uh, where she says, uh, your review of the, of the Hoving book in New, York Re in New York Review of Books was a sheer delight. I was constantly laughing out loud with admiration, but at the masterpiece of treasures paragraph, I practically had to lie down on the floor. I was beside myself with mirth. <laughs> I just love the way you write. As always, Camille Paglia. Um, and so this is actually, I think this is a really, um, you know, it's kind of emblematic of, of a lot of, uh, a lot of this is that, you know, whether you agreed with Hughes or not, um, I think everybody understands that he was just a masterful, masterful stylist. Um, and it's really interesting in this case, uh, to be able to see, um, you know, the development, uh, of some of that, uh, some of that writing. Um, and I mentioned his television documentaries. Of course, the one that really catapulted him to sort of international stardom was the first one, which is the shock of the new. And so we have here, um, we have the shooting, we have the, this is the original uh, shooting script. Um, I, I will put it under the, uh, I'll put it under the other camera so you can have a look at it without me having to hold it up. Um, you know, it starts, I'm Robert Hughes, and this series, The Shock of the New, is about an old subject, you know, but you can see that it's really, it's very heavily annotated. Um, you know, he's really changing, uh, he's st sticking new pages in, he's crossing out whole paragraphs. Um, so it's, it's quite an interesting um, sort of, I, I'd be, I, I've thought about, you know, you could watch the series or you could read, you know, the, there's also, it was a best-selling book um, that accompanied the program. Uh, and so one could, uh, could certainly um, compare uh, those two things. Um, there are some nice, uh, you know, there's some, some nice photographs um, from, uh, from the filming. There's a sort of picture, I'm not sure what he's in front of. I don't remember what building that is. Um, this is uh, on location, I think in Brasilia um, for shooting the architecture um uh the, the the sort of portion of the of the episode of the show on kind of modern modern architecture um here's a kind of production still this is of course was was the one that we used um for the announcement for this pro program um filming uh uh filming in new york um so that's a very smoggy uh new york city skyline behind him and then a couple of sort of uh, funny like glamour shot product uh promo uh, promo photographs um, from and this is uh, uh, you know for that it was it was for when it was about to be shown um, on PBS. It was originally shown on the BBC and then later shown on PBS. And 
I have read that the combined audience for this program was like 25 million people. Uh, which is um, a really uh, <laughs> shocking <laughs> uh, number for um, an art documentary. We have a comment that um, from one of our um, attendees that the great Lorna Pegram was the director. Uh, yes, um, he directed some of the episodes. Uh, he wrote and he wrote it and presented it. Um, and then that was often the case uh, from what I gather is that he would he would direct some episodes and other people would direct others. But I think he did he 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 uh, given that that was his first take, I, I think he only directed um, maybe one or two of them. Oh, and this was this was a comment from um, Robert's widow, Doris Downs. Yeah. Hi, Doris. What did Doris? Thank you for joining us, Doris. <clears throat> um, also, there's a great, uh, um, yeah, we're very, very grateful to Doris because not only did she uh, donate these papers to the archives, but she did an incredible amount of work organizing them ahead of time. Um, there's really, it's a, you know, there's still some, some work to be done, but she did an unbelievably good job of getting all of this together and by cataloging whole series, um, you know, like all the correspondence is all essentially cataloged and, and uh, and put in chronological order already for us, uh, which is great. Um, and these are a series of note cards where he's sort of making, uh, these are just like his reflections on having, uh, on his experience of, of making the series. Um, this I think is a, um, uh, sort of the remarks that he made um, at one of the, at a public screening um, of, of the film or of, of one or more episodes. Uh, I know that in, um, in New York, they were screened both at the Met and at MoMA. Um, and there's a, people were very excited. Um, yeah, so there's more of these kind of reflections on the relationship between, um, between writing and television. Um, and it was really uh, um, kind of it's, it's amazing to, to also to look to see all of the correspondence um, that we have um, from people who uh, who saw who saw the broadcast. Here's a great one from Bob Rosenblum, um, whose papers oh. we also have. Mm -hmm. um, and Robert Rosenblum was a very distinguished uh, art historian and critic and curator. Um, and he says, flu has been overtaking our family uh, one by one. This means we haven't been able to, to celebrate your, your fabulous series at the MoMA or Metropolitan Museum of Art. But the silver lining uh, in that cloud is that we're so homebound that we've been riveted to the first two, two programs and will continue doing the same for the next six Sundays. It's a joy to look at and listen to and fast enough even for my New York pulse. I've loved everything from La Roche Grion to Albany. Um, congratulations, Bob Rosenblum. Um, and there's a whole folder of these. There's like, you know, notes from Susan Sontag about how much she loves it. Um, this one I was, I thought was, was fascinated by. This is um, the critic, uh, Grill Marcus, um, who is a, uh, primarily a music critic, but is also a really interest, very important in his uh, uh, being sort of like taking uh, punk uh, and punk music and punk culture uh, really seriously um, in, in, in intellectual uh, and kind of philosophical terms. Um, so I thought that was also kind of interesting. Uh, it was a little bit, one of these surprising relationships that keep popping up uh, throughout this collection. We also, um, you know, we have things uh, from Shock of the New, like, you know, cans of film. Uh, yeah. So that'll have to, <laughs> we have cans of film, we have videotape, um, and we have this really for, for every project. You know, this is, there's a box or two boxes really for, for every broadcast project and every book project. Uh, and all of that material uh, is, in general, is, is all together. So it's a really, it's a really useful collection. And um, and again, um, my thanks to Doris for all the work that she did gathering all of that stuff together um, for us. Um, 
Jacob, we have a question if there, um, if the collection uh, contains any material on the um, fatal shore. Uh, that's a good that's question. All, yeah. <laughs> um, it will. Uh, the, that is, the, it's the only um, body of, uh, of material that, um, that was held back from the, from the donation. Um, and it has to do with, um, it, it might be needed for a future project, but that all of these fatal shore materials uh, will in fact um, come to us uh, before too much longer. Um, and for those, for those of, the, for those viewers who um, who do not don't know, the Fatal Shore was a bit of a departure because um, it's actually a book about the history of Australia, um, so not about um, an art historical topic, um, but nevertheless a very a very uh, important and um, very well received uh, book when it was published. Um, also, from for Shock of the New, we have three. Um, three scrapbooks, basically full of all of the kind of reviews and critical um, coverage. And there's a lot there. Are, we have this also for almost every project. They're not always in scrapbooks, but there's a great deal um, of, um, of press material and press clippings, um, often from sources that would be very difficult uh, to track down now um, because he was such a you know, because he was so famous in the culture in general, he would like pop up in, you know, airline magazines and <laughs> TV guide and uh, mm -hmm. popular magazines that libraries um, generally don't have complete runs of. So it's, it's really valuable to have such a complete record. It's also, it's worldwide. So there are, you know, he was, even though he left Australia in 1964, uh, he was still a huge celebrity in Australia. Um, and so the, the, the Australian press would cover him. His broadcasts were shown on the Australian broadcasting networks. Uh, and, you know, he would go back to Australia every year or so. Um, and his family, you know, his correspondence with his family in Australia, his, he's from a very prominent uh, political family. Uh, I think his brother was uh, prime minister or attorney general or both. Um, <laughs> Uh, or maybe, no, maybe one, uh, his sister was married to either the prime minister or the attorney general and his brother was the other. Uh, maybe Doris can remind me uh, or remind us of, of exactly how that family relationship, uh, those things work. So there's, there's a- uh, It was his brother. His brother served as attorney general. Um, so we have another- a, Hmm. Sorry, go ahead, Jacob. I no, was, no, no, go ahead. I was about to pull out a new category of objects, so it's a good moment well, for question. Well, we have a question just about the digitization and the timeline for these papers. Um, that's a good question. It's much more of a question um, for our processing staff um, okay. than for me. Uh, I can say that, you know, we digitize things. Uh, part, of, part of how the pace of digitization goes is based on, on demand. Um, so I expect that th there will be a lot of people interested in looking at material from this collection. Um, so as soon as we get a finding aid uh, completed um, and put up on the website, then people will be able to see uh, what's, you know, what things, what we have on the folder, at least at a folder level. And then um, even if we're not, if we haven't gotten to the point of complete digitization, people can request um, uh, individual folders of material to be digitized. Uh, using our digitization on demand service um, through our website. Okay, thanks, Jacob. There's also, you know, it's great. There's there's a lot of um, there's a whole uh, box of audio recordings of cassettes, um, which are also um, a really valuable uh, resource um, for researchers. And it's a sort of a mixture of things. And um, you know, some of the earliest. I think this might be the earliest. Uh, um, is this is also like there's this collection goes off in all kinds of interesting directions. Um, there are two tapes of interviews with Carlos Castaneda from 1971, um, which I was um, <laughs> I thought that was a very interesting uh, person for him to be interviewing at that time. Um, there's also this is a, and these are this is also indicative of what an amazing job Doris did uh, in terms of like you know labeling things and making really clear 
uh, what everything is when we know. This is great. This is a, a tape of a lecture by Wayne Thiebaud. And it is in this, in, there's this kind of amazing hand painted uh, sleeve or not sleeve, liner uh, to this tape. And so I'm very curious um, sort of where that came from and who painted it uh, and, <laughs> and how, uh, um, it'd also be nice eventually to be able to, to hear uh, the lecture itself. Um, there's also, he would use, uh, he would tape record. Uh, he made a lot of uh, sort of audio journal tapes, um, often while traveling. Uh, this is one of a whole set of tapes from a trip to Russia um, and Venice in 1988. Um, so that, those will be interesting, um, especially uh, if they are, um, you know, if he's sort of essentially taking notes um, when he's like seeing exhibitions or um, or other things, uh, doing research uh, for for publications. Um, there are interviews uh, with art world people. Um, here's an interview with Bill Rubin, who's the um, uh, the chief curator and then director of the Museum of Modern Art. Um, here's one with Philippe de Montebello. This is from, it says, this is on Sotheby's, the art market and museum. So this is from his research for that piece that I mentioned before uh, when I showed the notebook. Um, and so there's a whole box of these. Uh, and this is, um, this is a really uh, useful um, tool for researchers. And hopefully these will also be able to be digitized um, before too much time goes by. What else was I going to show you? Jacob, we have a question about um, you know some of the articles that he did, particularly for Time and uh -huh. um, for Time Magazine. And they were very like about the you know annotations or or various versions of those um, articles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. So we have. Um, we have uh, almost all of them, uh, the drafts or, or, um, of, of many, many, many articles. Um, and then we have, uh, often they're, they're filed with the, uh, they're filed with the, with the completed article uh, as well. And we have manuscripts for almost all of the books as well. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of material where you can see, uh, see the development of, of an argument um, or a thought, uh, you know, or thinking about a particular uh, topic. And he, 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 most of it is him editing himself rather than like being copy edited. I think by the time things actually went to an editor, uh, they were pretty much ready to, <laughs> ready to go. Um, do we have time for one last, uh, one last thing? Um, yes, we do. Right, this is this, I just thought was kind of funny that, there's a, a picture of, um, of Hughes uh, sitting uh, in the, at the White House, <laughs> uh, I think following um, this, uh, uh, the President and Mrs. Clinton request the pleasure of your company in an awards presentation ceremony to be held at the White House um, on October 7th, uh, 1993. Um, so this was, um, and then there's a, there's a letter from earlier in 1993 uh, from the secret from uh, Clinton's Secretary of Defense, um, and then a letter, uh, another letter um, from the White House um, from 1996, thanking him for uh, for his um, advocacy for public funding of the arts, which was under significant attack at the time. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jacob, and thank you everyone for joining us for Unbox Lunch. I hope you've enjoyed the program as much as I have. And um, I do apologize. We had a lot of questions and I apologize if we didn't get to your question, but hopefully we can um, follow up with you. Uh, please feel free to email me those questions at williamsjl at si.edu. And like I said, we'll try to, try to answer those. Um, support from friends like you makes this programming um, possible. We hope that you consider making a gift to the Archives of American Art at the Smithsonian Institution. To donate, visit aaa.si.edu um, slash support, or you can, again, email me at williamsjl at si.edu. My colleague has also entered this information um, into the chat. Thank you, and we hope to see you at our next Unbox Lunch, which is scheduled for April 22nd. Take care. Bye-bye.
Bye.